In this video, we will focus on the inverse of a quadratic function. We are going to introduce restrictions. By the end of the lesson, you will understand why we need to introduce restrictions with the quadratic function. In previous videos, we have already discussed how to find the inverse function. Let's say we have fx equals to 2x squared. Now to find the inverse function, the four steps, we replace fx with y, we swap x and y's position, that is step 2, then we solve y in terms of x. And therefore, the inverse function of 2x squared is equal to plus or minus the square root of x over 2. But in previous videos, we have explained that this is a non-function. So if I were to plot the function of fx, which is equal to 2x squared, I would find a parabola in this shape. And if I were to draw its inverse function of plus and minus of the square root of x over 2, I would find that the parabola is now tilted on its side, or it is reflected in the y is equal to x axis. That is the same as saying to find the inverse function. And the reason why this is a non-function, because it doesn't satisfy the vertical line test. So the vertical line test is, if I take a line parallel to the y-axis, and I can see that it cuts through or passes through the inverse function at two places, two or more places, then that is a non-function. Remember the rule of a function or the definition of a function? For every value in x, there's supposed to be one value in y. But in this case, for a value in x, there are two possible values in y. But now, with restrictions, the inverse function can become a function. If I consider the same graph of fx equals to 2x squared, and I restrict the values of x to values that are smaller or equal to 0, then the inverse function will have values of y smaller or equal to 0. Remember, in the inverse function, the properties or the x and y swap positions. And this is the inverse function that we have found before. But we had plus or minus the square root of x over 2. But now with the restriction where y needs to be a negative value, because it is smaller or equal to 0, I need to make sure that this yields a negative answer. That is why I choose negative square root of x over 2. So with the restriction, you take the x, the restriction of x, and in the inverse function, you place that restriction on y. So this is how the graphs would appear. The blue graph is fx, and the orange graph is the inverse function. The blue graph had a restriction of x smaller or equal to 0. But this is how you find where that position is. On the y-axis, the value of x everywhere on the y-axis is equal to 0. On the right of the y-axis, or if you take this number line towards the right, all of these values are bigger than 0 for x. And on the left, all of these values are smaller than 0. So, in this case, the graph of fx, which can form a normal parabola, as in the previous example. But the blue graph is the only values that we need to plot because the restriction placed is fx, where x is smaller or equal to 0. And that yields half a parabola. Now, if I reflect this parabola, the values of x that are smaller or equal to 0 would turn into the values of y. 
that are smaller or equal to zero. So how we find values of y on the x-axis, y is equal to zero. Above the x-axis, y is bigger than zero. And below the x-axis, y is smaller than zero. So I can see that this graph has all the values for y smaller or equal to zero. Remember in the previous reflection, we had a graph like that. But we don't plot the dotted parts because of the restriction placed on fx. So with the restriction of fx, we can also discuss its domain and range. Remember, the domain is the x values and the range is the y values. So let's look at fx. The domain, the values of x with the restriction, that's only the blue part, is x will be smaller or equal to zero. And the values of y, so in this blue graph, all of the y values are either equal to zero or above the x-axis. So y is bigger or equal to zero. Now, using this information, I can write down the information for the inverse function. So the x and y swap positions. So x would be bigger or equal to zero and y would be smaller or equal to zero. You can see that the properties are swapped, but you can also read this from the graph. So if I look at the values of x, all of the values of this graph is on the right side of the y-axis, meaning x is bigger or equal to zero. And all of the values of y are below the x-axis, so y is smaller or equal to zero. Now let's use that same fx and draw it for 2x squared where x is bigger or equal to zero. So in the first part of this video, we have already discussed that the inverse function would be the square root of x over 2. And the values of y would be bigger or equal to zero. Therefore, this will be plus the square root of x over 2. Remember the x and the y swap positions. So starting from the origin, this first part of the graph is fx, where x is bigger or equal to 0. And the second orange graph represents the inverse function where the square root of x over 2 is drawn. And you would notice that these properties are a simple reflection of every point where x and y swap positions. On the y axis, we have x equal to 0. On the Left of the y-axis, we have x smaller than 0. On the right, we have x bigger than 0. So for the blue graph, where x is bigger or equal to 0, it is from the y-axis towards the right. And the x-axis represents y equal to 0. So above the x-axis is y bigger than 0. And below the x-axis is y smaller than 0. And because of the restriction on, on fx, there will be a, re a restriction in y in the inverse function. So y must be bigger or equal to 0. So that means from the x-axis upwards.